Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We're built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha Conquer Outdoors. Giving stuff away always feels good, which is one of the things I like most about my job when we have a contest. This Argo Go Anywhere sweepstakes consisted of an all expenses paid trip to the Lenodier region of Quebec to an outfitter, a well-known outfitter called Coin Levine. During your three day stay, you were gonna get to fish on a privately stocked lake, go on a guided pheasant slash partridge rabbit hunt. And then of course you get to go for a trail ride on brand new Argo ATVs. But the biggest part of it all was that you get to go home with a brand new Argo 6x6. I'd say we'll be another two or three minutes until we're there. Cool, I'll step over and watch for you. Our winner, Gordon, couldn't have been a more deserving winner. We had Gordon fly into the Montreal airport in Montreal, Quebec. We hauled all the toys with us on the back of our Diamondback on our, on our Chevy pickup, and uh, we picked him up at the airport. The Argo Go Anywhere contest was actually perfect. Like, I love hunting, I love fishing, I love off-roading, and I love dirt tracks, so nothing better in a contest could have come around for me. Seeing Luke Lester pull up with the Argos and everything on the truck and trailer, it was like, wow, this has happened. You're riding shotgun. Cool. First of all, as far as dirt tracks fans go, you couldn't ask for a more dedicated viewer, so that felt good is from Nova Scotia. He's not super affluent. He, he loves being outdoors. He loves his family. He's got four kids. He loves being on his ATV, but his ATV just bit the bullet and is no longer usable. Talk about a perfect scenario. Pulling in, it was just beautiful. We met up with Paul. Paul is Argo's local representative or DSM for that area. Super good guy. I'd actually met Paul years and years ago when I was much younger in this business. We always want to expose our product. And in, in this sweet state, which was right across North America, we were getting our name out from the south all the way up to the north. So, I mean, from an exposure standpoint, this was a good way of doing it. I was so excited that I asked my brother Danny if he'd like to come for the weekend. It was a great opportunity to expose him also to the amphibious experience, which right here we delivered. Coin Levine is just such an impressive place. It's cozy, it's comfortable. The cabins themselves are fantastic. They're clean, they're big, uh, they got wood burning fireplaces, the rooms are comfortable. Everything about this place is top notch. So that's your prize there, right, Gordon? I could tell Gordon was just super pumped to get some miles on that Argo, but uh, we used up most of the day traveling. So we basically just unpacked, got situated in our cabin and called it a night. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. We had a great night at Coin Levine, great sleep. We were all super excited. When we woke up in the morning, Gordon and I kind of went over and checked out some of the grounds at Coin Levine. They got a little petting zoo kind of thing there with some goats and rabbits and horses. The lodge itself is so cool. It's got a full bar, restaurant with amazing food, some of the best food I've ever had on a trip, great people. It's just an awesome spot, and anybody looking for a place to ride, this is where I'd be suggesting they go. Coin Lavigne is a, a familial operator. Uh, my family bought it uh, 10 years ago now. Our first goal is to plan uh, some trips for family or couples. Uh, we are doing snowmobiling, VTT, uh, fishing, hunting, and things like that. We have partridge, uh, bear, moose, and rabbits. We are stocking uh, trout in the lakes every week in the summer. We are looking at what is going out of the lake, and we are putting uh, some more in the lake every week for two weeks. That's your key. Yeah, that's awesome. After getting the Argos unloaded, all that was left to do was get out to where we were gonna fish. So the plan was to just head out in our Argos 
and basically drive the Argos right off the shore into the water and use them like a boat and just fish off Argos for the day, which is something I've never done. This location, Coin I Bing, is the ultimate place to go because you have everything that you can use your Argo to showcase your Argo and see where it shines. Getting into the Argo for the first time and driving through the trails was what I was so pumped for to begin with. They're really maneuverable, crazy fun to drive. They're like little tanks. finally got to the lake, looked it over, it was gorgeous, but driving an off-road vehicle into water is totally against every moral part of my instincts. Once I got in though, I was told just to keep my center of balance, and sure enough, I went in, and surprisingly, you get used to it very quickly. Now, fishing is not something I do much of. I'm not a fisherman. But this opportunity was kind of cool because, I mean, I had to go fishing. It was a private lake, it was quiet, sitting in a cool Argo. It just seemed like the perfect opportunity to actually enjoy fishing. Definitely gonna be really neat at home. And usually I just fish from shore. The Argo is gonna make it so much more fun and so much more amazing to go places to fish. I had warned everyone about the Dirt Tracks curse. And for anyone who hasn't watched our segments before when we've tried to fish or hunt, the Dirt Tracks curse essentially is that whatever we're trying to fish or hunt, that ain't gonna be there that day. Even if there's billions of them normally in that spot, the day we show up, there won't be any. And that followed us into fishing here in Quebec. This lake is stocked. The pictures on the wall in the lodge prove that people get tons of fish and we caught one little speckled trout. That's it, not even a big one, for the whole day of fishing. I certainly don't blame Coin Levine. First catch of the day. I know their reputation precedes them. It's a great place to fish, but it's dirt tracks. It's the dirt tracks curse, man. I think the most amusing part of the fishing was tapping to glance over and Luke Lester's kind of kicking back in the Argo, feet up on the engine hood, relaxing. Actually, I think he was kind of sleeping more so than fishing. This fishing portion of the trip was only the first sort of adventure that we were gonna be going on. And already we were showcasing the go anywhere nature of an Argo. I mean, if you think about it, if you wanted to fish a backcountry lake on anything but an Argo, you're gonna to have to have a rack on your ATV or side-by-side -side or a trailer. You're gonna to have to load up some sort of boat, canoe, whatever, and pack it all up. What did we do? We drove our Argo to the lake, we drove it into the lake. We used it as a boat for the whole day, and we had a great time fishing, and it was that easy. Caught the biggest one today. <laughs> a nice little trout. <laughs> You're laughing at me. <laughs> That's the biggest one, come on. <laughs> Beautiful, nice little fish. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. You know, I'm not really a big fisherman. I think that sort of was obvious on our day one fishing day. What I really like to do though is shoot guns and hunting, you get to do that. These back road trails that they've got and, and things in the bush, there are unlimited places to hunt small game. So for us in the morning, uh, we loaded up our Argos. I love that smell. Yeah, me too. And we took some of the same roads out to the hunting spots that we took to the fishing spots. And we were gonna walk down the trails and, and basically look for partridge and maybe some rabbits was what our goal was for the day. I gotta say, you know, ripping down a trail on an Argo is just a ton of fun. And I think it's super fun on the trail 
because it's not what you're expecting and because it's not just a side-by-side -side or an ATV, but it's a whole different experience. And sometimes just a different experience is as much fun as anything else you would have done. I mean, we we're just having a blast and, and kind of almost on the way out there forgot that we were gonna be going hunting too. Yeah, Gordon and I just got the opportunity to kind of wander along and chat about life and get to know each other even better and, and just have a nice walk in the woods. Generally, you'd see them like hiding under trees or just walking through thickets or whatever. But I was beginning to think the dirt tracks fishing curse is also a hunting curse as well. Here, partridge, 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 partridge. No? Okay. But that dirt track's curse, man. What is that all about? It's gotta be the cameras when the cameras are rolling. I mean, this area of the world is partridge territory. This is where they live. I mean, I can't even count the number of times I've been riding in Quebec and had partridge run out on the trail in front of me while I was riding. Did you hear that? It's over in the right here. Yep. We spent a lot of time looking for this thing, trying to see if we could just get a glimpse of a bird, and we didn't. One of the great things about Gordon is that even though he came here to hunt and fish, he wasn't disappointed. He was really happy just to be there, just to hang out with the crew from Dirt Tracks and get to know the guys from Argo. And, you know, certainly this wasn't something that Coin Levine is known for, not getting birds. This is just a fluke. And he was cool about it. The final day of the Argo Go Anywhere Sweepstakes contest fulfillment was riding Argo ATVs on some of Quebec's best trails. And in this case, we couldn't ride right from Coin Levine because it's hunting season and the area that they're in is actually closed to ATVing during hunting season. But we were only about 20 minutes from the town of St. Combe. So we traveled with the truck and headed over to St. Combe. We were lucky enough to have two brand new Argo ATVs, an Explorer 500 LE and an Explorer 1000 LE. And Luke was ever so gracious to let me have the 1000. Then they just totally blew my mind by us driving right straight through the main streets in a town. Like, that's unheard of where I'm from. Trails here for ATVs, I mean, they'll blow your mind. They're better than most groomed snowmobile trails are in the winter. They might as well be roads. You could drive a car down them in most cases, but they're just for ATVs. And I mean, that's just so impressive. That's one of the things about this area of Quebec, Quebec in general, that people either don't understand or don't appreciate just how good the trails here really are. The trails are so wide, spacious, so smooth, uphill, downhill, there's twisties. It's an amazing trail. Explorer 1000 LE is amazing. Rides great, handles great, tons of power. It's a beast. When you're riding ATVs, it's nice to have a place to go. We picked a spot along the trail that was close. There's a brand new bridge that the local club has built uh, specifically for ATVs and side-by-sides, and that's where we headed. I mean, this was no, like, bridge on an ATV trail that somebody goes out and builds with their buddy. This was a full-on back road level, highway level bridge built over a river. It was impressive. So we went down and checked it out and had a look around. And then it was time to head back. But overall, I mean, the riding experience, just being there, we didn't even need a destination. Let me take off my Argo hat and just be a regular hunter and fisherman. This weekend, in this location, with the riding and the product we had, I had an awesome time. Guys were great. Gordon was super cool. Wish I would have caught more fish, but what, what can I say? I tried. <laughs>
looking back on the weekend, it's been more than what I expected it to ever be. Winning in Argo, Frontier 6x6, meeting the guys from Dirt Tracks, fishing and hunting at Coin Levine Outfitters, probably one of the best weekends I've ever had in my life. Next time you see a contest like this, I urge you to enter, because guys like us do win. My favorite thing about ATVing is getting to know new people and meeting new people, making new friends. Gordon is somebody who loves dirt tracks, and, and he's a new friend now. But I also made a friend in Paul from Argo and his brother. I mean, these are people that I could call on at any time and just say, hey, I need a favor, or we're going to go riding. Do you want to come with us? That's what ATVing is all about. We got to push our Argos and learn about their capabilities. We got to go hunting and fishing unsuccessfully, mind you, but I love this. And I hope there's many more awesome contests like this one in the future. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. The two-up ATV class is one that gets largely overlooked in terms of media coverage and realistically manufacturer's attention but this definitely doesn't mean it's not an important segment in the industry. Two-up ATVs actually sell quite well. Proof of this is the long list of manufacturers who offer entire lineups of two-up models at different price points and levels of performance. The two-up ATV isn't just a good idea, it's a necessity. Before purpose-built twofers were a thing, riding two-up was actually dangerous and in many places illegal. Polaris offers multiple two-up models in multiple trim levels. From the base 570 to the fully loaded 1000 XP, there's definitely something for everyone. At the bottom of this list is the Touring 570 base. This is Polaris's budget-friendly two-up offering, and its price point is, in no uncertain terms, impressive. It may not be flashy, it may not be loaded with fancy features, but it definitely has all the important bases covered. Things like a 567cc Pro Star dual overhead cam single that produces 44 horsepower, McPherson struts up front and double A arms out back that yield 8.2 and 9.5 inches of travel, on demand shiftable 4x4, Polaris's legendary CVT transmission, and lock and ride compatible under rack storage up front. In terms of passenger amenities, this sportsman touring has got raised passenger floorboards, spacious king queen seating, a non adjustable but very flexible backrest, and multi position passenger handholds. Clearly, there's nothing missing that you're going to need to have fun and be comfortable, but let's look at what actually is missing when compared to its higher end two up siblings. Instead of trick 14 inch aluminum wheels wrapped in great big beefy tires, this base model touring has got 25 inch tires wrapped around standard steel wheels. It does not have power steering, nor does it have EBS engine braking, active descent control, or fancy painted plastics. Even a motorhead like me who can't resist an upgraded model of anything can accept that the base 570 really is all you need. But when you consider the price, well, we'll get into that a little later. Polaris's 570 single produces 44 horsepower, which is more than enough to take you and a friend anywhere you might want to go. It feels fun and flickable in the woods and produces top speeds that are more than adequate for faster trails and fire roads. McPherson struts up front yield a decent 8.2 inches of travel, and while the ride from this front end is definitely good enough, it's not as good as the 570 Touring SP with its double A arms. Again though, a small sacrifice that's worth making when you look at the price tag. Despite not having power steering, this base model Touring handles really well. I've said this before, of all the ATVs in the industry today, Polaris's Sportsman is the one that actually needs power steering the least. It handles predictably, steering is light, feedback into the handlebars is minimal. If no one told you it didn't have power steering, you'd never feel like you were missing out on anything. Rear end ride quality, arguably the most important aspect of a two up ATV is outstanding, thanks to 9.5 inches of rear end travel that's plush and preload adjustable and 11 inches of ground clearance. In terms of ergonomic comfort, the driver is getting the same cockpit layout and seating position as the single seat Sportsman 570. It's comfortable, spacious, and feels just right. Passenger ergonomics are excellent. The seat is really plush and soft, which actually adds a little bit of extra suspension for your passenger. The handholds offer multiple grip positions, and while the backrest isn't adjustable, it's really flexible, so your passenger won't get bucked forward when the trail gets rough. It's got good power, it rides good, it handles good, and it's comfortable. Let's be honest, this isn't exactly a mind-blowing synopsis of this vehicle. So far, there's been nothing to really rave about. Until you look at the price tag. 
In an industry where bigger, better, flashier, and more impressive seems to be the name of the game, Polaris has bucked the trend and brought us a more basic, slightly pared down, yet completely capable two-up ATV with a retail price of just $76.99 US. Think about that for a minute. For a hair over 7,500 bucks, you can be out enjoying the trails, exploring, getting dirty, and finding endless adventures with your favorite passenger on a purpose-built two-up ATV that while not as fully loaded as more expensive models, is every bit as capable and every bit as much fun. So what's the more impressive option here? Having the flashiest ATV to impress your friends or having just as much fun for a fraction of the cost and keeping more of your hard-earned greenbacks in your pocket where they belong. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Textron Off-Road, power, performance, and precision engineering. Thanks for watching Dirt Tracks Television. For more great content, click on one of the links on the screen and make sure to tune back every day for fresh new content in season on Dirt Tracks TV.